Hello there, I'm Kathy Ostrander Roberts, and I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about the process of working in encaustics. I guarantee you that this will not be a high-tech video as um, I can't find the tripod to hold the camera, so we might have some foibles here and there, but I thought I'd kind of show you around uh, my workspace and uh, give you an idea of how this process goes. Encaustic has been around for thousands and thousands of years, and um, it's kind of had a uh, resurgence in popularity in the last few years. I stumbled upon it at a uh, adult education class a number of years ago. They were offering free wine, so I went. Um, and I have absolutely embraced it and love it. I, I, one of my favorite themes is water, and this process and this medium lends itself so well to creating um, pieces that look like the ocean. So I'm gonna move this around here a little bit. Basically, when you're working in encaustics, you have all kinds of different waxes you can use. You can use these pre-made, pre-formed waxes that you can buy in any store or online at, at Dick Flick or places like that. You can also use regular purified beeswax and caustic medium and mix that with powdered pigments. Now, powdered pigments, for what it's worth, are a little more toxic and um, you really should have a breathing apparatus if you're going to get serious about encaustics because the, the fumes and whatnot and the powdered pigments can be fairly dangerous. There's also uh, available is something called pigment sticks and they are oil-based pigments that you can apply to your wooden panels and um, create color, underlying colors that way. They come in all sizes. Here's a ginormous one. And you can also use traditional oil paint uh, to create under underlying colors and, and add. So it's kind of a, in a true sense, it's a mixed medium. You have the purified beeswax and Damar resin, which forms the base. And then you add all of these different uh, varieties of things to create the colors. You do that simply, well, not simply, by um, melting the colors. Here's what I call my palette, which is just a glorified uh, skillet top sort of pancake maker. Um, and you'll note in the background, this apparatus here, This I'm not turning it on today because it's just too loud. That's called a ventifume. And it's very important that you have that in uh, working with encaustics because again, the it can be very uh, toxic. There's all kinds of different ways to move your pigment around. There are mediums that you can buy. This one, for instance, is called Carnuba Wax, and that makes your, your uh, paintings more shiny. Think of it like car wax. There's Impasto Wax, which gives your um, wax a 3D dimension. And there's XD Wax over here, and that is to um, give you a hard finish on your paintings. So once you have your melted waxes, you can apply them to your um, panels. I've got one here I'm working on, and I'm just gonna apply some different um, paints to it, and then I'll show you where we go from there. Excuse the non-high-tech, non-high-techness of this, of this video. Uh, let's see, let's see if we can get it to work. Hang on, hang on. That seems like it might hold for a nanosecond. Um, so if I wanted to apply any of these waxes, obviously I could do so. I just use a regular chip brush. There's no way to clean these brushes, so don't even try. Once they're used, you can either keep them in the same color and reuse them, or you can just throw them out because they're not usable after that. So if you just apply the wax right to the surface, you can go light, you can go heavy, you can you know do whatever you feel you want to do. I'm going to cover this surface more with white because I am doing kind of a mulligan on this painting. It's not one that I have finished yet and I'm kind of not sure which way I want to take it. So once you've applied your wax, I'm just applying white at the moment, 
then you can use a, a three different ways, four different ways of applying, uh, moving the wax around on the panel. My favorite is a torch. This is one size torch. It's basically a, a creme brulee torch. Like if you're making creme brulee, this one you can buy in any hardware store. And you see that's a butane flame right there. That's for small, smaller paintings. And then of course there's the achiever size torch that I love. Is this one. Again, good to have a vent in your area so that the fumes of this don't make you crazy. And then uh, some people also use um, heat guns and some people use hair dryers. Some people use uh, encaustic irons that are just kind of like to iron out the painting. Like I said, mine is mostly this because it allows more movement. So once you've got your paint on, you can torch it. And what you're doing by torching it is making it adhere to the panel and to the other waxes so that it doesn't chip off. One of the fun things to to do is watch how the paint moves and how it changes on the surface. For instance, here is, uh, you can still see it's still moving a little bit and it's forming bubbles. And that those bubbles actually work well in a painting with water because they're reminiscent of sea foam. So there are probably, again, excuse my amateur video here, there are probably I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> there are probably anywhere from 10 to 12 layers of wax on each panel, uh, which makes them fairly heavy. Uh, and when you're all done, they should last uh, lifetimes if they're cared for properly. When they're first created, however, they do sometimes have kind of a, a, a what's called a bloom on them and uh, how you can remedy that. It's, it's, a, it's a curing process. They kind of get kind of cloudy and how you can remedy that is a number of ways. You can take a very, very soft cloth and just polish the top of them. I've heard that pantyhose, if they still exist, work really well. And I liken it to uh, polishing your car. They are wax surfaces and they will shine right up. And you can do that once a year, twice a year with no harm to the painting and it should last you forever. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.